Hello and welcome to the YBT recap from our amazing lunch that we had recently. Uh, had our coach JC, fantastic time, really good. My co-host here, Evan Herman. Uh, we're excited to be with you today and uh, we're excited to really have some good conversation about what maybe those who might have missed out on. Yeah, um, and awesome. those maybe who, who, who heard it, but like, that was so good, I've got to hear some more of it, right? Awesome. So um, so just tell us a little bit, kind of your, your theme of the, 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 the luncheon was like, who are you, right? That was kind of like the main thing of who are you branding. So just what is that? What does that whole theme mean, your story? What does that kind of mean to you? Yeah, you know, absolutely. First of all, I'm honored to be on this show. I'm grateful for both of you, Stephen and Evan. You know, my, my goal every time I speak is to leave the audience inspired. Uh, it, it, yes, I love to educate and teach, but more importantly than that, I want people to leave that room believing that anything and all things are possible. Yeah. Well, I was right. ready to run a marathon Come after on, that. Baby. I was just like, <laughs> I can do... No, I apologize. Oh, we, had, we signed you up, so yeah, okay. that's, that's this right. weekend. That's right. It was oh, good. really? From, from couch to marathon. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so tell, recap your story, you know, because you, you had depression, where you were from, and you wrote this story in your mind of what you wanted to do, and it yeah. didn't work out. So I'll let you share that. Absolutely. Well, I grew up in New Jersey on the Jersey Shore, and uh, we grew up with very little from a monetary perspective. Uh, my mom and my dad were separated at a young age, mm. and we found ourselves, my mom, my sister, and myself, working to survive, right? And yeah. uh, I'll never forget visiting food pantry pantries at the local churches. Um, we stayed in shelters at times. Um, just to just to eat was a struggle a lot of times to yeah. figure out how we were going to get to the next day. But my mom always, even though we lack stuff from a financial perspective, mm -hmm. my mom always instilled great uh, values and morals into us, and she yeah. always instilled compassion and empathy for people. So no matter what we were going through, yeah. no matter the struggle at the time, my mom would always say, "Hey, all things work together for good," Come and on. she would take us to serve other people. And me and my sister yeah. at times were thinking. This is crazy, it's ridiculous. Right. We don't have anything, we're lacking, but we're giving. Yeah. It didn't matter if it was the last dollar, it didn't matter if it was my sneakers, whatever. She always taught us you know, that God will provide. And yeah. so growing up, I grew up with an immense respect for people that struggled and also uh, an immense, like uh, my heart just always ached when I saw people in need or struggling. Yeah. I had such a, a heart of compassion, empathy. But I also said, you know what? I never want to see my mom work this hard again. I never want to see my family struggle. Yeah. So uh, I decided that I was going to be the savior and I was going to figure out how to get us out of this situation. And, uh, you know, I had big goals and dreams. At that time at a young age, I a lot of times used athletics right. to kind of clear my mind from the work I had to do or the struggle we were going through. And it ended me up at Oral Roberts University right here to actually, uh, with big goals and dreams, to play basketball. And uh, we all have a story we create for ourselves. That's right. That freshman year, I came out here, you know, never say never. I said, I will never go to Oklahoma and I wouldn't go to Oral <laughs> Roberts University. Right. I remember reading the dress code and they said, you can't wear earrings, you can't wear flip flops. I'm like, I'm on the Jersey Shore. <laughs> I have piercings all over my body and I rock <laughs> flip flops every day. I'm in trouble. Right. But I came out here with big goals and dreams, hopefully to play basketball and rescue my family. Yeah. Um, I made one choice that freshman year that radically changed my life forever and of course my story. Right. And uh, there was a hot girl on campus, a pretty girl on campus, and all the guys are chasing her. And who wins? Coach JC. And this young girl, freshman year at Oral Roberts University, winds up getting pregnant. The second best thing they tell you to do is get married. I get married, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, at 20, uh, just 20 to 21 years old, I find myself divorced all right, a kid on the way, and then all of a sudden the fight of my life to be a father with the story I created wow, for myself yeah. to play basketball thrown away. Right. I'm working endless hours trying to figure out how do I make this happen. One thing led to another with no hope, desperate. I ended up face down just across the street in an apartment from ORU in a 600 square foot apartment, face down, <laughs> contemplating suicide, over $400,000 in debt, wow. not knowing what was next, lost all hope um, at the lowest point in my life. And uh, I believe we all make choices in life. Sure. It was at that time where I had to make a decision, and that's where my story started to take a turn for the best. You know, and I learned how to turn a loss 
into a win. And I know how much you want to get into that. But the bottom Ooh, line wow. is, yeah, but the bottom line is that I know after going through that downtime, right. after seeing how God is a God of restoration, that all things are yes, possible and all right. things work together for good. So right. to go back to the first question, it's mm -hmm. almost impossible when I walk into a room, my goal and my mission is to leave everybody in that room inspired, motivated, that anything is possible, no matter what they walked yeah. in with, right. with hope and, and knowing that, you know, that, that life is valuable. So since that time frame, tell us a little bit yeah. about your family now, like your picture now, what that looks like, because you came from a struggle. Yeah. So what does that look like now for you? Man, it, you know, so that downtime, I had to make a decision, you know, and I'll never forget, I enrolled in a Bible school called Victory Bible Institute. I enrolled in a class, Ron McIntosh was teaching this class. He talked about renewing your mind, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to the things in this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I started to do what the Bible said. I started to post these things around my room, these verses, and all right. of a sudden, my situation around me got worse but I start to get better. And that's what my talk was about. Right. If you're in a yeah. situation, if you're in a storm, right. adversity comes, storms come, obstacles come, but it's not about what happens to you, it's about how you choose to respond. Yes. Right. And I had to shift my perspective, and that's what my talk was about. Yep. If you wanna win in life, if you wanna have a successful relationship, uh, a career, mm -hmm. financial status, whatever it is, you gotta start to think, speak, and act that's as right. if you are already there. You right. cannot focus on the situation any longer. So I started to say, wait a second, what if this, this stuff that Ron McIntosh is teaching and these biblical principles that my mom actually taught us growing up right, but I right. abandoned, what if I really put them to the test? Yeah. And as my situation got worse, I got better. One thing led to another and I started to figure out that even though my story that mm -hmm. I created, that I created, that was the problem, right? I had to right. submit, get on my knees and understand that it's not in my will, but in his will. Right. And when I started to 100% surrender and say, God, I surrender my life to you. What do you want me to do? Maybe your goal for me was not basketball. And, and that was my dream and my goal and my ambition. And once I surrendered and started to think, speak, and act like I was on the other side, man, things just started to happen. I right. went on to become the youngest strength coach in the nation at the Division One level here at Oral Roberts University. Right. Was blessed and privileged to train some of the top athletes, you know, coming in here and now in the world. We started a, a, a nonprofit, Fit First Responders, right. where now we train police and fire and medics. It's a national brand with over 65 agencies. Wow, we awesome. started a sports performance facility, um, dynamic sports development, Tulsa's number one fitness program for women, boot camp Tulsa. I'm blessed and privileged to travel and speak, right. you know, all over the country. Now, four books later, I don't say any of that. To right. impress anybody, right. I just sit here still amazed right. that right. God can take a kid from Jersey that was face down, four hundred thousand dollars in debt, right. suicidal. And the most important part about that entire, you know, thing I just told you yep. is, man, God restored my marriage, not my 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 not my daughter's mom, but He brought a beautiful young lady that was a blessing in my life, and now we're married ten years. Awesome. My daughter lives with me full time. I've had full custody of my daughter, and I've been blessed to be able to raise her and watch her grow, mature and coach her so I know without a doubt that if God did it for me he's the same God yesterday today and forever That's and right. no matter who's watching this show right, right now no matter what they're going through that all things are possible That's right. that, that leads to one of the questions that we have written down here it's going by how you feel at the moment is the seed of failure and I and I love love that it's how you feel because so many times we make decisions based off of feelings mm -hmm. versus how you pointed out, believing that you are already on the other side of victory. So unpack that a little bit. Well, Evan, it's us. a great question. And I've been blessed now to coach people from all walks of life, you know, from, from pastors to CEOs, to some of the most influential people in Tulsa. And one of the things that I've learned, and I can only coach them on what I've done, is that if you continue to go by emotions, you will lose in life. I mean, there's so many people, no matter where you go on a daily basis, that are going through hell in life. And they yeah. put a smile on, but deep down inside, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, they're drowning, yeah. right? And so many times, when you feel a certain way, you act that way. You mm. see, every action originates with a right. thought. Right, so I know when I was face down, I had to say, wait, hold on, Coach JC, you can't go by how you feel. And as yeah. human beings, so many times, we wait until we feel 100% to do something. Right. 
And I just have a philosophy now that I don't go by how I feel. I've over the last, you know, 10 years, as I've gone through hell and came back and all these storms, I said, wait a second, what if I was just to act accordingly to what I know I'm called to do and what I desire and deserve in life? Yeah. Right. And it's a discipline, it's a commitment to say, no longer will I allow my feelings to di t dictate my actions. Physically, yeah. man, I get home some evenings and it's 7 p.m. at night, 8 p.m. at night, I don't feel like working out after a long day. But I've disciplined myself enough and I've trained my body and I actually tricked my body to say, Coach JC, you no longer go by how you feel. I could look back now and tell you I have no idea how I wrote books. I have no idea how I spoke and opened <laughs> up for Donald J. Trump yep. you know, right. on I a just... campaign, the president of the United States. Right. I have no idea how all of these things worked out, but here's what I do know. I never questioned and I never allowed myself to go by how I felt. When I was tired, I didn't act yeah. tired. When I was depressed, I didn't act depressed. When I was lonely, I didn't act lonely. When I had fear, I didn't act fearful. Now, in the beginning, I did. Right. But once I trained myself and conditioned myself, just like you train your body, yeah. you can train your emotions and your, and your mind. I trained my emotional state to say, you know what? I'm gonna focus on this, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation is, and I'm gonna take this action right. no matter how I feel, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually and things just started to fall together, so. So would you say, because hearing that, I feel like I'm probably quarter of the way, like sometimes I'm being led by my emotions, sometimes feelings, you know, and working on the end picture, for guys like me and much of the audience, how would you be consistent or how would you develop and consistently train yourself to not be led by your emotions? Because some days I do phenomenal, and sometimes yeah. I it's like, pancake I'm just flat out on the iron and and being baked yeah well it's a great question and, and just like you said and we talked about earlier you have to train it yeah right you have to train it so I always suggest to people you know on a daily basis put yourself in situations that are uncomfortable mm. right schedule out what you know you don't feel like doing if you don't feel like exercising and you know so if you ask yourself right now what am I missing out on Right? Mm -hmm. What am I missing out on, on life right now because I've allowed excuses to become acceptable in my life? That's awesome. And before you graduated the first grade, right, Evan right. and Stephen, the statistics show that you were told the word no over 40,000 times. You've been conditioned in the age we live. It's <laughs> not possible. You can't. Right. It's okay to go by how you feel. And, you know, I believe in miracles. I really do. I, right. I remember seeing on the basketball court yep. every single day at ORU, expect a miracle. That's right. But right. I, so many times, I honestly believe that as human beings, we can create our own miracle by what we do every single day. Yeah. The mind's a powerful thing, but even more powerful is your body. That's and right. if you're not getting what you want, sometimes it's just changing your physiological state. Man, I'm a big guy about talking and speaking things into existence, but I'm a bigger guy in action, yeah. right? Yeah. You can't just say stuff over and over every single day and think it's gonna happen, right? I believe in prayer, I believe in winning confessions, I believe in all that. But if you don't feel like doing it, every single day have a schedule and say, I know that these are the things I'm not gonna feel like doing. Right now, somebody that was watching is struggling, they need to lose weight. Why not right now, today, go and walk the block? You know that's gonna benefit you. That's right. You know that's gonna help you lose weight right now because they don't feel like it. That's right. Right now, there's people watching that want a successful business. They're struggling financially in their business. Why not right now go pick up the phone and make 10 calls to prospects right now that could buy your product? Because they don't feel like it. Because emotions dictate and determine. Yeah. So I just decided, discipline yourself. And my suggestion for you would be the same. Discipline yourself to say, no matter how I feel, I'm gonna schedule these things out and I'm gonna do them no matter how I feel. And I'm gonna start to train my emotional state by training my physiological state. Yeah. And when you do stuff over and over again, all of a sudden the percentage of how you feel, it's a lot easier to act your way into feeling a certain way yeah. than to feel your way into acting a certain way. Yeah, that's right. We don't, we don't feel that's like right. being great dads all the time. We don't <laughs> feel like being great husbands all the time. Oh my gosh, yeah. It, it goes for every area of your life. Right. But that's why I always start with what do you want yeah. and why do you want it? If you know what you want and why you want it, it's so much easier to be able to take purposeful right. and intentional action every day so that you can really create your reality. That goes that's into the, what you were talking about, pain versus pleasure. Yeah. And that's something that, that I've learned a lot about over the past few years. But for our audience members who aren't as familiar with pain versus pleasure, would you lead into that with basically what you just said? Yeah, so I had to get to a place when I was face down in a 600 square foot apartment, contemplating suicide, $400,000 in debt, in the fight of my life to see a father, where the, I got to a place where the pain was so strong. 
And I didn't see a way out, right. but the pain was do or die. And I think so many times in life, people make decisions, right. all right, buying decisions, purchasing decisions, feel good decisions because of pain or pleasure. It's gonna either gonna elevate the way I feel, it's gonna give me more pleasure in life, mm -hmm. right? Or I wanna avoid this pain. Yeah. So I ask people all the time when they're, when they're having struggle trying to make decisions in life, what is the pain that you're trying to avoid? And maybe the pain isn't severe enough, and that's why we talked about at the actual YBT, is yeah. ask yourself some pain-induced some pain questions. Yeah. What am I missing out on right now yeah. because I am sleeping in, or because I am not making the 10 calls of business, or because I'm not being the husband or the dad mm -hmm. that I call to be, whatever right. it may be, right. because of what I, I'm lacking that I desire, right? If you're not, if you don't have motivation, right? Motivation's like a feeling, right? It comes and totally. goes. Right, yeah. like you said earlier, there's days I'm on ultimate high, there's days I'm on ultimate low. Yep. Everybody deals with that. Yeah. The age we live now, it's hard to understand that because if you turn on social media, yeah. you see everybody and everybody looks happy and go get, I'm like, this is such a facade. Mm -hmm. It's hurt our entire nation because even my daughter at 17 years old, she picks her phone and she sees all these people and they look so successful. I'm like, that's all fake. Yeah. yeah. They deal with the same problems you deal with physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So what is the pain that you're trying to avoid or what's the pleasure you're trying to gain? If you don't have motivation right now and you need to be motivated in the area of your life, then you need to create pain-induced questions. What am I missing out on right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, or what have I missed out on already? Right? Or yeah. pleasure induced questions. If I was to create this, what would it do for my life? So when yeah. I was face down, I had so much pain that I wanted to avoid that it was a do or die situation that that's what pulled me and drove me. Yeah. I never wanted to feel this way again. Yeah. I never wanted to go another day, lay my head on the pillow, not seeing and kissing my daughter. I would cry myself to sleep. And I said, I'm gonna stop feeling this way. This is not the life that God created for me. And that pain is what propelled me. So I believe that so many times in life we're not motivated because we haven't created enough pain or pleasure. And you gotta ask yourself pain-induced questions and pleasure-induced questions. And if you do and ask yourself the right questions and you're real with yourself, you will eventually be motivated in life. All right, that's awesome. That's good. So um, I was looking kind of at your history. You, you, you talk about some books that have really, really changed your life. There's three particularly you list, I think, kind of on your, your bio or whatever. Um, talk about those a little bit. Well, there's one book. Yeah, a great question, man. I love. I, I wasn't always a big reader, but when I was in that downtime, yeah. I realized that you know personal development. I had to build the best version of me, right. and if if I was going to get this thing, so I started to train myself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, in the gym, but also reading. I had to discipline myself to read and not go by how I felt. And I started to read books, and one of them was the Purpose Driven Life. Yeah. And the Purpose Driven Life just opened my eyes to realize that you know what, you could create a new story. That God actually has a purpose, and there's a calling on your life, and there's a destiny. That was one of them. And then obviously, Think and Grow Rich was another one. Napoleon Point Hill, yeah, um, a business book. I probably read that book every every year, maybe three or four times a year. And then there's so many books that I could mention, uh, but the the most important book I really you know, read and adopted for the first time in my life at that downtime was the Bible. Right. You right. know, I really took these biblical principles and realized these are real life promises. Yeah. And it was the first time in my life that I really started to dig deep and not only retain them, but actually go out and implement them. Right. Yeah. Retention without implementation is useless. Right. So still to this day, I take biblical verses and I say, wait a second. If God says that all things are possible. Right. What does that really mean? Right. If all things work together for good for those that love him and are called accordingly. OK, well, what does that really mean? You know, and I take these biblical principles and then I create game plans around them and I make things possible off of biblical principles. I think every book out there, everything you hear, every greatest motivational talk out there, every time I listen to them, I'm like, that's all biblical stuff. Right. These guys got it from the Bible, admit it or not, right? That's right. So the Bible was a big one for me at that yeah. time. It became real to me. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people where we read the Bible, we go to church, but we never really jump in and have a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior. That's right. And when, and until I did that, my life was a mess. And I think it was God slapping me saying, hey, you're not doing this on your own anymore, That's right. right? You're gonna surrender because I have a calling on your life. Yeah. And then Purpose Driven Life was the other one and Think and Grow Rich. That's, That's good. Awesome. So the final question is for you, this whole premise is about what kind of legacy do you want to leave? And so, you know, on your tombstone or when you're gone, what do you, what do you want people to say about you? Yeah, I mean, I, that's that's a great question, and I ask myself that question every single day. I actually have a winning confession on my phone, and before I go over the winning confession, it actually talks about the legacy I want to leave, mm -hmm. and it's a constant reminder for me. Um, but for me, I want people to look back and say, you know what, Coach JC inspired me 
to walk out my calling in life. Coach JC inspired me to be a better version of me. Coach JC inspired me, motivated me, encouraged me to be the best dad, the best husband, the best businessman, whatever it may be. And when I say the best, my motto is win all day. And so many times people get caught up in these I, in messages all the time. Yeah. Man, what are you calling people losers because I'm not, a, I'm saying, whoa, whoa, you're missing the whole message. When I say win all day, it's like success. It's all relative, right? Uh -huh. Success for you might be different than it is for right. me. But what it comes down to is at the end of the night, when, when you lay your head on the pillow, you have to ask yourself a valuable question. Was I the best version of me today? Yeah. Did I right. maximize right. my God-given talent today? Right? And that's what the legacy I want to leave is. I want people to say, man, Coach JC, when he walked in the room, he made me a better version of me. He he, he helped me win in an area that I think was possible. He right. helped me overcome. Right. So I honestly believe that I went what I went through, okay, I went through for a reason. You don't know it at the time. You don't see right. it at the time. Right. But now that I'm through it, the whole reason I went through all of that was to create a story now because there's people on the other side that are gonna benefit and win from my story. And mm. I've seen it hundreds of times, thousands of times now, and that's the legacy I wanna leave. I want people to know that, I want people to say, Coach JC made me a better version of me. And what does that mean? Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, my relationships, Come on. a awesome. well-rounded, the best version of me. Come on. Win all day, baby. All day, baby. All day. <laughs> Love seeing you, right. Evan. Thank you, I appreciate it. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Coach JC. He was our YBT speaker, and we just want to thank KGEB for hosting this show and allowing us to be in studio to have such an awesome opportunity to interview. What a great man. And so before we go, I just want to say one thing that you inspired me today, okay? Come on. So on my way here, or before I came here, I was getting ready to have breakfast, and we had leftover cake from Father's Day, and I so wanted to put it in milk. And I thought, there's no way I can eat chocolate cake and milk before I come see Coach JC. Come on, So baby. thank you for inspiring me not to <laughs> eat cake today. Guys, thank you so much. Take care. Have God a great bless. Day.